What's up everybody? Unrested back again and I'm a little bit sad and a little bit happy because summertime is coming around and as I've said before I very much dislike summertime due to the fact that I have to keep wearing long sleeves to work. Okay, my fault, my choice, I got the tattoo, whatever, you know. Uh, but it's just really uncomfortable because probably, you might not know this, but Japan doesn't have central air conditioning. Um, we don't have central heating either. And schools don't even have air conditioners for the most part in the classroom. Um, it's rare that they have, public schools have uh, air conditioners. Uh, sometimes the teacher's offices do, but that's about it. And think about it, you spend most of your time in the classroom teaching. You don't just sit at your desk all day. Uh, but the good thing is, CC Lemon Zero, that means CC Lemon with no calories because I really don't like to drink, you know, the, the soda with a ton of calories, is out again for the summer. It's a seasonal thing. That's another thing you'll find out about Japan is, sadly, if you fall in love with some type of food or drink, you might later find out that it's seasonal. Uh, especially things like, and, and don't ask me why, I really don't know why yet, maybe one day I'll find out. Kit Kat bars, different type of Kit Kat bars, everything from vegetable Kit Kat bar to oh, vanilla Kit Kat, all kinds of crazy ones that come around seasonal. There's different types of Pepsi. Uh, I should have featured them at some point, um, but I never bought them because they sounded so gross, <laughs> such as Cucumber Pepsi, and I'm not making this up at all. I'm not pulling your leg. Shiso Pepsi. Now, if you've ever tasted Shiso Leaf, the combination is, well, maybe, I don't know. I've talked to Japanese people, and they didn't like it either. It was really unpleasant. Azuki Bean Pepsi. Oh. Uh, there was another J Vlogger on here who had a video about it where he tried to drink it, and he threw up. So I, I think you can, you know, guess how those taste. I'm not really too sure why Pepsi keeps coming out with those because they don't tend to be huge sellers. But hey, you know, whatever. I'm not marketing, okay? I'm a teacher and a J vlogger, that's it. Uh, one other question I get all the time is a lot of people are like, hey, Scott, you're a family man now, so do you not get out to the bars much anymore? Not find out much about, you know, Osaka nightlife anymore? Well, yeah, that's pretty much right. I really don't. Um, I really do live like a family man life now. So unfortunately, um, I won't probably ever make any videos about nightlife in Osaka anymore. Maybe on the rare occasion that another J vlogger visits me, such as when Radri or Tokyo Sam or Betamax visited me, I made some nighttime videos that showed what our nightlife was like. But for the most part, me going out is maybe a two or three times a year type thing at this point in my life. Uh, most of my free time now, I actually spend, um, as I've shown you before, a lot, doing a lot of my artwork, uh, for example, here is a painting I did recently of uh, those of you who are nerds like me, uh, the god Korn from Warhammer Fantasy Battles. I, I painted a picture of him recently. Yeah, and I also uh, another thing I do. People would ask me like to buy prints and stuff of pictures they saw from uh, my art JFAC. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really I don't really make a lot of prints because. Sadly, prints don't really sell very well in Japan. I've tried it before and it really just doesn't sell very well. Um, people don't tend to put a lot of posters on their wall due to the fact that they don't want to put pins in the wall and that relates to not getting your money back when you leave an apartment. It, it's, it's, it's meant for a whole other JFAC if you want me to get into that. Um, I do commissions though. Uh, for example, right now I'm doing a commission for uh, a writer who's writing a, a fantasy comic book. So, if any of you want to hire me for commissions, uh, you know, you can contact me on deviantart.com. Probably most of you who are artists know about that. Uh, I'm unrested on there too, so you can find me. It's really easy. If you want to contact me for a commission, I would be very excited and I would thank you very much. And I'll even give you a shout out to whatever your product is that I drew for because I want royalties too. Anyway, <laughs> let me get into what the topic is for today. Um, I'm kind of getting sidetracked here with intros. Um, I get uh, recently a lot more mail from people who actually do make it out to Japan and from that I gotta say I am utterly flattered when they say they watched my videos before 
and came out here and felt like they knew a lot more because they watched it. I do these for really entertainment purposes. I do them for my own hobby. Uh, obviously, you know, I don't do them as religiously as I used to now that I have a family life, so you see those big pauses every once in a while. Um, but when I do get an email like that that says, hey, Scott, I watched your videos before I came here, uh, you know, really help me out, and do you want to meet up for a, a drink or something sometime, we'll chill and hang out. And I always do it, actually. I've met, actually, quite a few people who've come out here to Japan, especially, obviously, Osaka people, mostly. Um, actually, soon I'm going to possibly be meeting up with Apocalypse... Is it 68? 98? 78? He's the metal guy, you know, with the big beard. Uh, anyway, his name is Michael, and I'm going to be meeting up with him soon, too. He actually just made it out to Japan. Uh, anyway, um, I want to say to those people, you know, first of all, yes, I'm very flattered. And second of all, a lot of you who do do that actually write to me later and ask about starting your own channel. And the questions I get from that are always, uh, you know, I want to do my own version of questions, but I don't want to copy you. Is it okay if I do that? Or... Should I do a language video, or have you covered this? Or, And my response to all of it is just do whatever you feel you're interested in. Uh, really, it should be about what you have a passion for. And really, don't worry about any kind of copy. Um, I don't have any kind of trademark, copyright, or restricted rights on doing a JFAC. You could make your own channel and call it JFAC2 if you wanted to, and I really don't care. Um, in fact, I would be flattered, you know, because they say, what, mimicry is uh, the best uh, flattery, right, or something like that. I probably totally messed up that quote. But honestly, I feel you should do whatever you want about Japan when you get out here. Um, if you do want to start your own channel, if you do want to make it about uh, answering questions, there's still so many questions and so much culture that I have not even touched on yet. And there's stuff that I'm still learning now. Uh, you know, people, I recently got a question, people ask me, is there stuff that still surprises you when you wake up in Japan and find out something new? And yeah, uh, recently I found out, um, and you know, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I found out recently from a friend who actually worked in the embassy here, American embassy, um, that no wires in Japan are underground. There are no underground wires as far as internet, and electricity, and uh, other telecommunications such as you know phones and landlines, which there there aren't like tons of landlines anymore. I did not know that. Now, if you come to Japan and you see it, you'll see that in between alleyways there is a crazy webbing of wires, and also. I've never had a power failure in Japan. I've never, in the five years here, I've never had a blackout, ever. And I mean, this is the place of earthquakes, right? We had the big Fukushima earthquake and I still never had a blackout. Um, I'm from Florida and I don't know if you know how bad our hurricanes are there, but we get blackouts like all the time. During summertime, you just expect you're gonna get, you know, four or five blackouts through just those couple months of summer. I've never had a blackout in five years here. So now it's making sense. Oh, that's why there's so many wires everywhere between alleyways here in Japan. I always saw and thought, like, what is this, some kind of, like, webbing made by a schizoid robot spider? No, it's all wires being above ground. So that was another thing, just recently I learned that, just last week, another thing that surprised me. So there'll always be stuff that you learn, always new stuff that you find out every day, new words that you learn all the time. Um... A new one I just learned recently is Buchiri means extreme. Okay, Buchiri. I'd never heard that before. And you use it next to an adjective only. So uh, that I learned recently just from watching TV. Uh, I'd highly suggest that when you get here is try to watch Japanese TV every night. It's not the most exciting TV I know. I know it's pretty boring. Most of it is just shows about SMAP making an omelet. But it is going to teach you Japanese, and it's not going to just teach you polite Japanese, it's going to teach you common, everyday, and modern, and new words, okay? Which is really important, because if you come here and you start to learn some lessons from your local ward office, that is great, that's awesome, you took some good initiative, but most times those classes are taught by the elderly who have retired, and that is extremely nice of them, and I am not downplaying 
their volunteer services or their donations to society. That is great, but you will learn Japanese that is a bit outdated. But anyway, enough of all that for now. As I'm saying, make your own thing when you come here. Don't worry about asking me, can you copy me? Of course, I have no hold lockdown or anything on what I do. Even if you want to do it from home where you are now because you study so much about Japan, I would never take offense. The only thing I would ask is if you do make a channel and you do ask me to promote you or add you, please don't shut down your channel like three or four months later. That's probably the biggest thing that irks me. And I've heard this from other J vloggers too. If you're gonna make a channel and you're gonna start it, okay, I understand if you wanna take a break from making videos, hey, I do that all the time, right? But don't start the channel, ask me to add you and promote you, which I will do because I really want, you know, more to get out there, more information to get out there about this great country and then close down your channel like two or three months later. I've had this happen three times already. So if there's one thing I can ask, you know, if you're gonna make it, be a little bit dedicated. Even if you're gonna take a break, that's okay. You know, you don't even have to tell me you're gonna take a break. Take a break for six months if you want to, but keep your channel up so that I don't suddenly find one day one of the channels I've added at the bottom just is gone and I've got a big blank space where I could be promoting somebody else, okay? Until next time, I am unrested. This is JFAC. I'll see you next time.